Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world with self-care strategies from Chinese medicine. I'm your host, Brody Welch, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Brody Welch, and with me today is Holly Bertone, who I had the pleasure of meeting recently at a conference. She is the author of an important new book about thriving in the workplace with autoimmune disease. That is the title. She runs a website called pinkfortitude.com, and she is a survivor of breast cancer and Hashimoto's. We're going to talk today about how she has worked with these two major health challenges and how she's drawn on her life experience to help other people. Holly, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today here on A Healthy Curiosity. And thank you so much for having me. I really, I really look forward to connecting with all of your listeners. Let's dive right into it. Your autoimmune journey started back in 2010, I believe. Tell us a little bit about what was going on for you at that time and and what you were told. Oh, sure. So um, my autoimmune journey actually began with a breast cancer diagnosis. And um, I was, you know, relatively young and healthy. I was diagnosed on my 39th birthday. Most girls want to get a nice pair of earrings. Um, I got breast cancer for my birthday. So, um, wow. Yes. <laughs> that seriously I sucks. I know. And I uh, tried to make the best of it. And then two days later, my then boyfriend got down on one knee and proposed. So, in 48 hours, I had uh, eight crazy words in 48 hours you have breast cancer and will you marry me? And uh, literally just changed my life forever. You know, so I went through uh, surgery, chemo, radiation. It was a, it was a pretty rough year. Let's get it straight. It was, it, cancer was a very rough year. Oh, no, but, no um, way around it. Absolutely. Right. Those eight words, it must've just taken you in a totally different trajectory than you had been going in. Like that, okay, like not only do I, am I going to deal with this health issue, but I'm with somebody who's got my back and we're going to do life together and it's going to be different. And like, I'd love to hear about, about what changed for you at that time. And not just a, a new, uh, a new husband, but, you know, going through the engagement year, I was bald and sick and, you know, most women they're, you know, they get engaged and they want to look at wedding dresses and pick out flowers and cards and things like that. And, and, uh, you know, honeymoon destinations and uh, yeah, it was pretty much just survival at that point. And my husband also has a son from a previous marriage. So it was also, you know, taking on new rep- uh, parental responsibilities as well. So I'm working a full-time job, going through cancer treatment and, uh, you know, trying to be a sexy fiance and trying to be a good stepmom as, as well. And we ended up getting married 10 days after treatment ended. So I was still sick and bald on my wedding day. And then what happens? I know, I know that leading up to this autoimmune Hashimoto's thing. So most people recover at some point after their cancer diagnosis. I mean, especially, you know, young, healthy, et cetera. Um, I I did not, my health actually just started to decline and I didn't know why my, you know, my doctors kept saying, well, you know, it's because, you know, your body's been through a lot. So just give it some time. And, you know, I mean, I was, you know, I was 39 pushing 40 now, but I still, I wasn't accepting that answer. I kept saying something's not right. So I pushed and pushed and pushed and finally had my uh, thyroid checked and it turned out I had a Hashimoto's, which is a way to advocate for yourself. First of all, right. Just being, just being told, I mean, a lot of people would just accept that like, oh yeah, right. It just takes time, but your, your intuition told you something different and you followed up with that. And that's, that's not always easy to do. So yes, do do indeed enlighten us as to what Hashimoto's is and what it's all about, because I know that not many people um, necessarily are familiar with it. There's um, Hashimoto's is a type of hypothyroid disease, and basically, it's the, the easiest way to describe it is a is a, thug, a a sluggish thyroid. So you know, I kind of say you know your thyroid goes to sleep and then it makes you go to sleep. Yes. Um, you know, whereas the, the hyperthyroidism is, is, you know, a little more closely linked to the autoimmune with the, with the Graves disease, with the heart palpitations. So, um, you know, I, 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 had, I had the one that I was just absolutely chronically tired. Um, but interestingly, so I went to the endocrinologist and he gave me some medicine, kind of patted me on the back and, you know, said, good luck. And I'm like, okay, I have medicine. Let's, you know, go, go continue life. Right. 
and I still never recovered. And my health just kept declining and I didn't know why. And, you know, I, I, you know, I, I live in the DC Metro area, you know, we've got some decent doctors here. You know, I thought I was going to good doctors and, you know, they kept saying, well, you know, it's, it's, you know, just all part of recovery. And, you know, your body's been through a lot with the, you know, the chemo and the cancer and the Hashis, but some of the symptoms that I was having, I mean, it was just horrific migraines, um, you know, horrible IBS, just this too many trips to the bathroom a day to count. Um, and the worst, uh, you know, a lot of, of uh, joint pain, but the worst was the chronic fatigue. And it was basically like, you know, it didn't matter if I got eight hours of sleep, 10 hours of sleep, I still woke up and felt like, a, you know, a truck had hit me. I mean, I just felt completely wiped out. Um, you know, so I was dealing with that. And, um, you know, just, I, and I actually did give up for a minute in time because I didn't realize that, you know, diet had such a big influence. Wait, so this was all of these terrible symptoms were while you were on medication. Yes. So yes. in other words, like this is like, okay, take this and you're fine. Or right. like take this and you're managing it. And like, it certainly sounds like it was not, uh, not sufficient in terms of, of giving you a very high quality of life. No. And again, I didn't, I didn't know any better. And, you know, at, at this point I just kind of thought, well, you know, I have the medication, I'm going to see doctors. I mean, you know, maybe I just am supposed to be sick. I don't know. But I started reading up on, um, you know, just the the diet, especially in terms of um, autoimmune conditions. And uh, actually, it was the um, the autoimmune solution by Dr. Amy Myers was the book that really opened my eyes. So I did a whole diet change, you know, with gluten free, dairy free, um, you know, eliminated. I mean, it really wasn't a big, you know, processed food sugar person, but you know, I was a good weight. So I didn't, I enjoyed my sweets in moderation. I didn't think anything about it. So, you know, I really eliminated the sugars, the processed foods, everything like that. And fortunately, you know, my health started to get better, but I also think that there was some, you know, still some cellular damage that, um, you know, I'm much better today, uh, after, you know, going through a lot of dietary and environmental changes in my health. Um, but I still, my Hashi still does, you know, kind of flare up once in a while, you know, stressful situations or, you know, random, random things going on. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting seven years of, of some health challenges. This episode of A Healthy Curiosity is brought to you by my Basics of Chinese Medicine course. You probably know your Myers-Briggs type and your astrological sign, but do you know your Chinese element? Knowing your element can help you recognize your superpowers, your innate gifts, and how to maximize them. It can also help you avoid becoming a caricature of yourself. But better yet, when you understand your constitution, you can start to get to know which acupoints, meridians, foods, tastes, and activities are going to be medicine for you. And that, my friend, opens up a whole new world of self-care. Basics of Chinese Medicine is an eight-week deep dive into understanding your inner ecosystem. Registration is now open and we start October 18th. You'll learn how to confidently locate and use some of the most powerful acupoints and some essential oils that pair well with them, how to eat with the seasons, how to tell what a food or an herb does by how it tastes, as well as each internal organ's mystical powers, its emotional and psychological functions. To register, visit BrodyWelch.com, that's Brody with an I-E and Welch with a C-H, and grab your spot. What do you think made the most difference in your health getting better? Um, I honestly think it was uh, removing the gluten and the dairy and the sugar and the processed food. We did a big um, purge in the house for um, toxins as well. So I make all of my own ho um, home cleaners and laundry detergents. I use all natural makeup and body products, things like that. So yeah, we, we turned into a pretty crunchy house and my husband's a green beret and he's even on board with it. So, well, he's gotta be right. If he's so, oh, yeah. like, if he's, he's probably likes the version of you where you're actually healthy and thriving better than, than the one where you're miserable. Exactly. Yeah. Can you walk us through why avoiding gluten? I mean, obviously like people know processed food, not, not medicine for most conditions, like right. pretty much, pretty much actively inflames the system, no matter what you have going on. But what's the connection with gluten and dairy? Like why it's just, why those foods and what role do they play in autoimmunity? So, um, I'm, I'm certainly not the expert on this topic. I can give you kind of a basic, uh, rundown, but it's, um, basically it's, it's called molecular mimicry 
and the the proteins in these um, these foods, uh, your thyroid sees as an invader, and in, it starts to basically attack itself. So um, you know, it's it's that's really and and grains especially gl- gluten and grains. Um, you know, there's there's a a, a protocol called the autoimmune uh, paleo protocol that um, you know really focuses on removing a lot of different you know glutens, grains, dairy, sugar, processed food, etc. Um, you know, I, I started with a very big elimination diet. I've I've introduced a few foods back into it and in just you know small moderation, but um, I've really I've stuck to it and I don't I don't miss any of it at all. Well, it's, it seems like if you know that consuming these things are, is going to set off a full-blown immune response where your body starts fighting itself that, yeah, I could see that could be really motivating to <laughs> do it the way that you're doing now. I'm curious, when you were working full-time, how did you manage having this disease? Well, it was interesting when I was, I was at a, the same organization, I had worked for a government agency uh, since 2004, and I actually just resigned this past April. Um, and the uh, when I had cancer, the management just went out of their way. They rolled out the red carpet to take care of me. Um, you know, they gave me a, a special parking spot. They let me work, you know, on weekends or you know, really flexible hours so that I could, um, you know, c- kind of go to chemo and still be able to work. Um, and, you know, I mean, I wanted to work, I wanted to, you know, hold down as much of a full-time job as I could. You, you still have to have treatment and they did. I mean, I think it's the, the empathy factor when people hear cancer, they just really have a lot of empathy for you. And, um, you know, for obvious reasons and they just, they could not have been any nicer. Well, fast forward seven years later, same organization, just in a whole different, um, you know, department and a whole different management team. And uh, for the last three years, my management was actually very supportive. And, you know, I didn't have anything, you know, really written down too much in terms of official, but, you know, if I needed to, you know, leave early or take a break or anything like that, um, you know, they were flexible with my hours and, um, you know, just, just being very generous to make sure that I could be as productive as humanly possible and still, you know, still kind of manage um, my health as well. They didn't want to lose you. They were willing right. to. They were willing to work with you in terms of what you could do. A lot of uh, women. I mean, men too, obviously. But a lot of women with have autoimmune. We we have to hold down full time jobs. I mean, some of us are, you know, maybe lucky enough to to not have to work. But you know, to to balance that full time job, you still have to come home and have other life responsibilities. So it's not like you know you can come home from work and just sleep the rest of the day. You know, there's still you know dinner has to be made and homework and soccer practice and, you know, spouses and everything else too. Right. And so obviously preparing a lot of your own meals or like most of your own meals, like just is, is necessary in order to do the autoimmune paleo protocol well. How did you create time to, to do what you needed to do to take care of yourself while at the same time working and while at the same time having a family? Sundays were always our um, meal prep day. And actually, uh, even though I work out of the house now, Sundays are still meal prep day. So I try to do as much of the the meal prep for the week as as humanly possible, and you know, and get things ready. And you know, we try to do kind of one you know nicer nicer as a dinner, and then you know, we still do the kind of quick and easy route. You know, maybe we'll do some you know canned uh, you know canned vegetables or steamed vegetables or something like that versus you know always having to cut them up and you know I'll make the salad cut up all the you know carrots and celery and things like that um you know I make my husband's lunch on Sundays and he can eat the, the whole week so you know it's just kind of balancing time to to prepare everything um but taking shortcuts and eating you know fast food or or you know processed food just you know it wouldn't have been good so you know I I had to make time I would make a lot of cookies with, um, not cookies like normal people think of, but um, cookies made with almond meal or almond flour that are, you know, super healthy and pumpkin and, um, you know, put some vegetables in there and then I would put them in the freezer. So I always have a snack. Um, You know, I don't have to worry about, you know, searching for something that's not healthy. I always have a snack, you know, that's, that's a second away and it just has to be heated up for a couple seconds. Nice. I'm thinking of the people out there who have autoimmune disease and jobs. I've worked with many people who kind of wonder whether whether they can be working, whether whether they should be talking to their employers 
about what they've got going on, whether, you know, what their rights might be. And I know that that's some of the, some of what you go over in your book. Could you share with us a little bit of, of advice for those folks? Oh, sure. And, and let me back up before I, um, I go into that. So, um, the management had actually changed um, fairly recently in in my position, and um, you know, brand new management team came in and was not um, not accepting, I guess, <laughs> of my condition and not accommodating at all. Even though you know what what few accommodations I was asking for were were minimal, um, they, you know, they wanted nothing to do with it, and um, to the point where they even rescinded my uh, FMLA, which is uh, Family and Medical Leave Act. Which, if your company has over fifty employees, it's a it's a law, and um, with, and it's also illegal to rescind it. Um, but I was my health was declining, and I was uh, going through um, uh, some some really bad Hashi's uh, flare ups, and uh, to the point where my doctor was um, you know wanting me to come in for uh, some infusion treatments to um, you know kind of keep me basically keep me out of the hospital. I was in in pretty bad shape. So um, I started learning about all of these um, accommodations. And when I made the decision to, um, you know, just to really to take my health into my own hands and, and leave is when I wrote the book because I wanted to help other people because I really couldn't find a lot of resources out there. So to answer your, your question, um, the third part of the book goes really in depth into the, to the resources uh, that are out there. And you had asked about, you know, should I, should I tell my employer? What are the accommodations? Um, you know, things like, you know, you can have flexible hours, maybe, you know, work a couple of days from home or take breaks. If you're standing all day and get tired, they have anti-fatigue mats that you could stand on that you could ask for, or even um, ergonomic chairs, uh, standing or flexible desks, things like that, just kind of depending on, you know, what, what the kind of condition is, if it's, you know, more, um, you know, joint pain or um, uh, the, the fatigue, things like that. Um, you know, if, brain fog is one of mine. I sometimes struggle for my words and thoughts and can't remember things. So, you know, being able to write things down. And the other question you had asked about asking your employer. Yeah. I often see people at a choice point where they're wondering, is work compatible with what I have going on? And sort of the pros and cons of, of sharing that, it sounds like since the law's on your side, it would be a good idea to talk to your employer if you, if you are dealing with, with these kinds of symptoms. The, the law is on your side and, um, there was actually an amendment um, to the American Disabilities Act and autoimmune falls under the American Disabilities Act. So individuals with autoimmune disease or conditions are covered under the law. Um, now, that doesn't mean that even though the law is on your side, um, that doesn't mean that reality is always rainbows and puppy kisses. Um, you know, my, my story was a very harsh story and an unfortunate story. I'm struck by the inhumanity, right, of your of your new management <laughs> right. saying like, sorry, we're we're gonna take your your FMLA away. We're gonna hold you to these standards that you you clearly can't meet that you've asked specifically for these accommodations. And right. there is a lot of sympathy for something like cancer that everyone knows someone who's affected by it. And autoimmunity or Hashimoto's, it's like a lot of times it's not something that uh, that people necessarily share with everyone they know. And it's not necessarily as widely recognized. Like people, people a lot of times don't know what that, what goes along with that disease. And so it seems like there's an empathy gap there. Right. And they call it the invisible illness for a reason. And, you know, it's, it's hard to see fatigue. It's hard to see joint pain. You know, the response that I got was, oh, we'll just drink some coffee or get some more sleep. And it, it doesn't work that way. No. Um, in fact, I actually had to stop drinking coffee because it was um, interfering with my health. Um, but I actually, I had interviewed um, an individual, uh, an advocate at the, um, um, at Jan, askjan.org. It's the uh, Job Accommodation Network and got some really good pointers from them about, you know, whether you should tell your employer or not. And, you know, here's the interesting thing is that you, you, good people are always going to be good people, bad people or jerks are always going to be bad people or jerks. Um, and I mean, that's just kind of life. So, you know, in terms of, you know, obviously I'm not a, a legal expert, but, um, you know, in terms of assessing, you know, your, your work situation, you know, what is, what is your company like? What is your management like? You know, if they're, if they're normally super supportive, then, you know, it, it may make sense. 
Um, but you can't put the, the toothpaste back in the tube. I mean, if you're talking to your coworkers about stuff that's going on, you know, chances are it could get out. If you're posting on Facebook about stuff that's going on with your autoimmune condition, chances are, you know, it could get out. So if you, if you don't want to share, that's entirely your right. Um, but then you don't have the law on your side. If you do share, you do have the law on your side, but then again, it's, you know, it's also kind of making that choice. So it's a very personal and individual decision based on, you know, not just your company, but then also, you know, how you are feeling as well and how, you know, how, I don't want to say good or bad your autoimmune condition is, but I guess how, how severe uh, your symptoms are. That makes a lot of sense. 2018 is almost here. What do you want to experience next? What if you really got that you have the right to take care of yourself, to move through your day with ease, to make time to move, meditate, nourish, and play? If you want to feel strong, lean, and comfortable in your body, to enjoy more focus and clarity, energy, and intuition, to develop a kinder inner dialogue, better boundaries, and more time for what matters most, these are the results we get with my self-care boot camp, Level Up Your Life. From Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, yoga, and habit change, we take one small step at a time to automate the basic habits humans need to thrive. And if habits rule 40% of each day, wouldn't it be awesome if they were the right ones? The most powerful lever you have over your health is what you do day in and day out. Is it time to level up your life? 2018 could be your year, and I would love to have a conversation with you. I'm taking a small group of growth-minded people on a deep, transformative journey from 11 weeks to a whole year because change takes time. Go to brodywelch.com forward slash level dash up and apply for your free discovery call. Do it before the end of 2017 and you'll be eligible for some serious savings on leveling up. Visit brodywelch.com today. I'm curious about brain fog, just to circle back to that, because it is one of those things where it's invisible, right? It's not like, oh, I need to sit down, but it's like, wow, I can't think. Are there things that you do to help yourself through periods of brain fog? The brain fog started during chemo and hasn't stopped. And I tried a lot of different things. Um, The best thing for me right now is I'm taking a supplement um, that's been working really well. and, And definitely I can tell a difference in helping. Um, and also I can't drink the bulletproof coffee, but I, um, I, t- I can take the brain octane, which, uh, helps as well. So, um, you know, just trying to get those, um, uh, omega fatty acids into yeah, the brain. Right. For people who don't know the brain octane oil is it, it's a um, medium chain triglyceride. Is it, it's like C8 or so, something that helps something. with essentially the brain loves fat. <laughs> the brain yes. loves good fat. And so, and this is basically like a, a, it's a biohacker tool that gets added to drinks that can help with, with focus. And I start, I start every day with as much fat as humanly possible. In what form? Uh, An avocado smoothie. Nice. Oh, I love avocados. Yeah, I actually, it's an avocado smoothie with um, some raw cacao powder. Um, I use a very gentle gluten-free kind of a protein collagen powder. Mm-hmm. And then um, some sun butter, nice. and, and I throw on a couple of dates, just you know, for sweetness. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's that's my morning uh, my morning brain buster. I make a version of that. I throw in ginger to mine, or Ooh. sometimes mint, just for the digestibility of it all. But yeah, that sounds great. Any other tips that you want to share with people about how either just something that you've learned along the way that you feel like is important for others to know? Um, I actually, I think I have two. Uh, one is self care is very important. I think, and you know, I'm not going to generalize, you know, women and men, but typically, as you know, women were caregivers, and you know, you're working full time. You know, you you come home, take care of the kids, the spouse, elderly parents, you know, soccer, church, everything, and you know, self care is typically not at the top of the list. So I think that is a number one is you know, you, the, 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 um, the analogy of the oxygen mask on the, on the airplane, you know, you, yes. you have to put on your oxygen mask first. You can't take care of anyone else before you take care of yourself. I mean, I was, I was at a point my health was so bad. I was failing at everything. And, you know, I just had to say, I just had to stop and say this, this isn't working and we need to make some changes. And they were really hard changes to make. I mean, you know, leaving a full-time job and a good income. I mean, it's a hard decision to make, but at the same time, you know, we, we weighed all the pros and cons and my health was, was number one. 
It's got to be at that point. Can you just uh, verify that we did not actually talk about this prior to recording this podcast that you were going to say that? This is like totally independent. Yeah. This is like my self-care is not selfish message that I've been <laughs> I've been on for quite some time. Uh-huh. I actually just this week wrote a manifesto, the You Have the Right to Take Care of Yourself manifesto, oh goodness, which awesome. is now available at BrodyWelch.com for everyone to download and hang on your fridge and tape it to your computer or, you know, like just have it somewhere where you can see it because it's so easy, especially as women, because we are socialized to take care of other people first. And estrogen is sort of, it's, it's part of our, our tendon befriend response. It's sort of, it's in there and it's, and it's reinforced socially. And it, you don't want to wait until you're in a crisis situation to start changing things. Right. And, and I was in that crisis situation. So. Right. I mean, like, it's the kind of thing where like from there, it's very clear that you have to put your health first. It's like that sort of this idea that we have in Chinese medicine of that, that health is not this binary thing. You're not, you don't just go from like health to disease instantly. There's right. this zone called imbalance in between. And like, while you're in that zone, you can be moving towards disease or you can be moving towards vital, vibrant, thriving health with every choice you make. There's only so far you can go with putting your self-care needs on the back burner before something does decide to break in the system. And so really, it's so much better to be motivated from a place of choice as opposed to feeling like I have no choice. Right. Like I have to do this in order to just survive. Life is going to be good. Life is going to be bad. I mean, that's that's what life is about, right? You're going to have great days. You're going to have, you know, tough days. You're going to have moments where, you know, things are awesome. You're going to have times where, you know, there's, there's illness or there's, um, you know, death or relationship problems or financial problems or, um, you know, I mean, a whole host of things. And, you know, just really enjoying life and taking everything as an opportunity to learn and grow. And, you know, that's, that's the message that I really try to help and inspire other people, not just in the book that I wrote, but, you know, on my website as well is, you know, regardless of what life hands you, you know, how are you going to take this and, and, you know, what are you going to do with it? This is, you know, life is handing you a gift, even though, you know, it doesn't look like one. Life is handing you a gift. What are you going to do with it? How are you, how are you going to, you know, come out of this, um, you know, better with, with more fortitude and, and more grit in life? It's a really positive framing of that question, right. of that situation. Right. So Holly, if people want to learn more, they can get your book, Thriving in the Workplace with Autoimmune Disease. And if they want to connect with you, how do they do that? Oh, sure. The book is available on amazon.com and they can uh, connect with me at pinkfortitude.com. And uh, my social media is at pinkfortitude pretty much across all the channels. All right. We'll make sure that gets into the show notes. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today. To Thank share you your story. So much for having me on the show, and, and I look forward to connecting with all the listeners. Thanks for listening today. For more episodes of A Healthy Curiosity, you can visit the iTunes Store. If you appreciated today's show, please leave us a review. This helps other people to find the podcast. You could also head to brodywelch.com where you can find free self care resources, learn more about Chinese medicine, and let me know what you'd like to hear about on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, be good to yourself.